guest, uh, one of my very favorite people. He actually barely got done getting through his tech stars, very prestigious. And he brought his company, who he's the co-founder of, called MoveLine here to Las Vegas not too long ago. And you guys have had tremendous growth since then. So first off, let's just start by welcoming Mr. Fred Kirk. Thank you very much for coming out. So, um, yeah, I just want to hear, you have a great entrepreneurial story, you have a, more like this than anybody else's story I've seen, a lot of ups and downs, but just tell me about where you were and when, uh, tell me about where you were when you were in college and whether you thought this is where you'd be now and where the entrepreneurial story came from. Yeah, sure. So, um, so I went to school at Virginia Tech and I studied engineering, science and mechanics there <clears throat> and um, I was kind of, I guess, you know, I went through like my freshman and sophomore and junior year and was kind of on, on a track, you know, Virginia Tech, the majority of engineering graduates there end up working in some kind of like private sector defense probably. That's kind of like the research track and everything else um, kind of drives towards, you know, a career um, working for the government or working at like Lockheed Martin or Boeing or something like that. So that was kind of um, the track that I was on. Um, and had um, like a pretty significant experience there that um, that took me on a different trajectory. Um, so the um, in 2007 there was a shooting at Virginia Tech, and um, I was in uh, I was on the second floor of Norris Hall where the shooting was um, in this solid mechanics class. Um, the class was taught by uh, this guy named Livio Labrescu. Um, he was this 77-year-old uh, Holocaust survivor that was teaching this class. And uh, the shooting started in the room next door to where we were. And uh, I remember um, we heard, you know, we heard what we thought was like construction or something. It was my first guess, like a nail gun or something like that. And um, it, um, it like pretty quickly became clear to everybody in our room what was going on, that this was, um, this was like a really that this was a really serious situation that we were living through, um, you know, something that would become probably like a pretty historical event. It took some period to realize like exactly what was going on. I think I remember hearing like somebody scream in the room next door and it became very real, like that this is, yeah. that, that was what was going on. And so uh, there were, I think there were 16 of us in, uh, in the classroom that day and um, about uh, 12 of us ended up jumping out of this second story window um, to escape, and myself included. Um, I was one of the last people um, to kind of make my way across the room and um, and climbed out of the window and, and jumped from the second story. It was probably like a 25 foot fall um, and, and hit the ground and ran away. And uh, of the people that were left in the classroom, our instructor was killed, um, a student in our class was killed. The two other students that were in the classroom um, before I jumped were, um, were shot but survived. Um, and all told, there were uh, there were 33 people that were killed that day. It's still the deadliest school shooting in in history. Right. Um, and so, um, so for me, this was, obviously for anybody, this was like a, a massive life event, right? It kind of sent me into like a spiral coming out of it, where like the things that I was questioning or like the path that I was on with my life um, looked. Like it, it looked really different. It, it kind of paled in comparison to this to this experience that I had and, and this thing that I that I've been forced into here. Even even as far as school shootings go, very few people are going to be in a situation like that, and this one happens to be the worst one in pretty much all of history. So I mean, you're taking you're more likely to get struck by lightning or something. So I mean, how yeah, how did sure. uh, I don't know how did that motivate? Like, you guess tell me about afterwards when you start digesting just how just amazingly strange that is. Yeah, very odd, um, and and obviously, I mean, even at, on Virginia Tech campus, there were like thirty thousand people on campus that day. So to have been, you know, one of like a hundred people that were in such close proximity to it, and um, is yeah, it was an extremely unique experience to have gone through. Um, and so I remember, like, immediately, I, I can honestly, I can barely remember like the next couple weeks as I was like, you know, trying to figure out a lot of things in my life, and and kind of everybody at Virginia Tech was during that time, and um, and there was. Kind of, uh, I remember what the next thing that happened was um, a group put together a, a marathon, like a, a memorial marathon, where a hundred people um, would run the Marine Corps marathon, and we would all raise money for um, like a memorial scholarship fund. And I, I kind of jumped at it. I had never run more than a few miles at a time before doing it, and um, saw it as like kind of just a place to put all this energy that I had, and kind of place like, um, like 
something to focus myself on in life, at, yeah. you know, for the next few months or so. And it was, it represented you, like... You, you, so that time you were looking for sort of a short-term goal to get your mind off. Yeah, for sure. I was, yeah, yeah the, the school year had kind of ended. I like had an internship coming up, but I, like the direction that I thought I would go with my life was was not the direction it was going. Clearly. So a lot of the sur survivors and people who were supporting the community after that put this together. It's like kind of a community effort. Yeah, there were I guess there were a couple people that that um, like had the idea and started organizing, and then a lot of people kind of got on board with it. Okay. Um, and and so for me, it was a really healthy thing over the next few months to. Um, to train for this thing and to set this like massive goal for myself, this thing that you know, like running a marathon is not. I you know I probably run like five or six miles before that and um, had no idea if I would be successful with it. It was this like massive long term goal. I knew it would be a ton of work to do it. And, and, and you and you and heard your ankle to too, it. right? Like before and then yeah, you're I had, saying, uh, just just to set the frame, the window sure. that you went out of was on the second floor. So you said, if, and I said it was a big floor. It's probably at twenty five feet. Yeah, I had a uh, I had like a avulsion fracture in my ankle. Um, yeah. That uh, yeah, that healed up over the, the few weeks after that, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, so that healed up and yeah. and um, and trained for the marathon and kind of at the and. It was it was like a really defining kind of like summer for me to go through that and, and like training for this marathon and then like reassessing everything else in my life at that point I guess, um, and you know to kind of like tie this back to to like entrepreneurship, um, I would say before this like on the track that I was on I had never really considered considered myself certainly not an entrepreneur like I was kind of aware of entrepreneurship as a thing that people did not really like a profession or something. Um, but I just, you know, I had kind of this path that my life would be on, and so as I started, especially like the the um, going through like committing to this massive goal with this marathon, and then like slowly like chipping away at it, you know, training day after day, and then like doing it and completing it and, and achieving this massive thing, I was like kind of looking for like the next thing, like another like massive goal that I could kind of dive into that that had some uncertainty attached to it, um, but but you know having like a lot more confidence in myself, I guess, that like I was not afraid to fail at, at something massive at that point. And so this is when I started like a lot of kind of ideas that were in the back of my mind. I brought, you know, I started like working on things like this. I had, I went from there into grad school in state of Virginia Tech and just kind of like kept tinkering on, on different ideas that I had and eventually like got to know um, some angel investors in the community. And, um, and so when I, when I eventually finished grad school, I had like a set of offers from, you know, like prominent, um, uh, like engineering firms that I could go get a job at, um, and turn them all down, and, and just like you know, I had like very and little. Like, you just to sort of your gut instinct. I mean, the risk of not doing it is greater than the risk of doing it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like the risk of not doing it is that you that you never know if, if you'll be successful right. at it or not. That you like will you know you'll do you'll do something else that's that's not like fulfilling your full potential, right? That you'll you will you're risking not like reaching the potential that you have in life, I believe. And yeah. um, and that like, I guess like having gone through this experience, like and knowing like how fleeting like like this experience is, to, um, that wasn't acceptable. That was like, I was not gonna like waste a year of my life doing anything that I didn't wanna do that was not like the hardest or the most challenging or the most fulfilling thing that I could spend my time on. Yeah. But so, so yeah, I'm mean, finding that silver lining seems like the most important thing from this story. I mean, when I know it's kind of a tough thing to talk about. I know this is something that nobody should or will probably go through. So if you can grab in there and just pull out what it, what kind of habits maybe this built? Um, I mean, for me, it was obviously, you know, I, I like nobody should have to go through something like what we went through at Virginia Tech in this experience, but, um, but realizing that like this, like the, you know, the, the downside or like the things that are going on in your life, like the things that you might be worried about are like far, far from the worst that like other people have experienced or that, that could happen. And it, it brings a lot of perspective, right? So like the perspective of like, if you quit your job and take some risk, if you, um, and, and try and like go out on your own to do something, then it's, it's really not like the downside of it is, is really probably not as bad as, as, as you might be imagining, right? Like if you have a, like whatever the downside is, like you you fail at it is what happens, right? You like spend a few months of your you life, or you spend or you, a few yeah. thousand dollars, or like you lose some investors' money or something like that. Like all of those things, like none of them are really that that bad in comparison to to kind of like what the worst the worst day of your life or of, other, of someone else's life could look like, right? 
And and the upside of doing it is that like you bring some great good to the world, or you you'll be much happier, you'll be much more fulfilled personally, and um, and and especially like in as an entrepreneur, like the I mean. You know, we think about like what we're doing here, and like the you know the jobs that we bring to downtown, or the innovation that we bring to an industry, or something like the upside potential of it is is huge relative to like right, any like any of the any of the downside right, things yeah. that could happen from it. That's really interesting. Did you did you ever talk? Uh, we just about this before, but did you ever talk with your professor about surviving the Holocaust and how that affected him? Did any of like the thought like the, the I'm wondering if like any of the traits or characteristics he had as an instructor like. Do you have those now? Like, did you feel? Um, I never spoke to him about the Holocaust. Um, he was—I mean, he was like one of the most passionate people that I've ever met. Um, he was incredibly good at. at um, he was like at the top of his field in aerospace engineering, um, and was so passionate about like the the subject matter that he was teaching us. So that was clear. That was one of the reasons why um, why he and I got along. I think. Um, Wait, would he have made it to the window, or was he just not? Uh, you just, he, you no, so he um, he like stayed by the door. He like held the door shut as the rest of us in the class like made our way across the room and, and jumped out the window. Nice. Yeah, it's an, it was an incredible story. Okay, so um, was so, so, so you, you, move line. Um, you you have a great co-founder, right? And um, tell me about how you met her and the company that you built and brought to Vegas and. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. Um, so when I was in grad school, I got to know a group of angel investors. Um, one of them was a guy that owned an agency in Virginia, um, and is now uh, is now on MoveLine's board as one of our investors. Um, so Kelly was working at that agency at the time. Um, I uh, raised some money from him and from some other folks for a different startup that I worked on before this that failed. Um, and uh, we raised about a hundred. The social calendar. Yeah, it was a social calendar. It was could myself and co-founder. It could have been huge. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but was it? And um, and we eventually shut that company down. But while I was working on that company, um, I got to know Kelly while she was working at the agency. And uh, Kelly was uh, the product manager on um, a project where a large moving company had hired this agency to build out a platform for itself. Um, so Kelly um, Kelly was like you know working with these moving company salespeople and these um, these household goods truck drivers and these dispatchers of this moving company and learned a lot about the moving industry um, while she was working at this agency and um, put together the thesis for like a disruptive consumer product in the moving industry. Um, and she and I got to know each other during that time and when I was um, starting to shut down my company or kind of decide if I wanted to keep going with it and try and raise more money or go a different direction, um, she and I sat down and kind of laid out what this would look like, and I shut that down. We started moving on a couple months yeah. later, and, and that was. Well, a yeah, you're, years ago. you're definitely disrupting the industry. I mean, as far as I can tell, you're one of the most disruptive Vegas tech companies. You guys are doing a great job. It seems like you're always hiring. And in fact, um, if you guys like MoveLine, which I do, <laughs> and you might want to think about working for them, you guys are hiring like crazy, right? Move yeah. And yeah, I think um, I think we've hired like 35 people since we moved here last August. Yeah, that's insane. Um, we've that's got awesome. dozens of openings literally right now. Um, we just got a, a large new office space um, that we're going to be moving into in the next week or so here. Um, so expanding pretty quickly. Yeah. So um, we're hiring like our entry level um, kind of customer service reposition as a move captain. <coughs> Um, but we're hiring for for marketing and product and design and engineering and um, operations and a bunch of positions across the board. So it's awesome. I'm sure, we get some people. Well, you guys want to do uh, maybe a cheers for for Mr. Fred here? Yeah!